depression because I am depressed. And who wouldn't be been on their own since they've been 14? Like I said, I meet people that I. And so you seen. say you, you say that people try to um, basically have sex with you. Sex with me all the time, family members, you name it. If I don't want to, they not help. Me. What family members have tried to do that? Uh, some uncles that's deceased, some cousins that's still living. How how recent was that? Uh. But two of them was just like a year and a half ago with one of my uncles before he died. And I told him what I was going through and he said he was going to help me, but he wanted me to come over there to have sex. And that was like really, really bad for me. Did you ever do that? When I was What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. Um, so we got a young lady today out here with her son. Um, and so are, are you guys homeless? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, how old are you, miss? Well, I'm 41. I just don't look my age, and my son is 10. Okay, all right. Um, and so, is this the only child you have? No, I have a 24 daughter that's in, in school in uh, Detroit, Michigan. Okay, okay. Um, and so, how long have you been homeless? Now for two months, but technically for six months because we was in an abandoned house because they didn't see about us. Okay, okay. Um, and the two months, is that how long you've been down here in Atlanta? No, uh, we've been out here in Atlanta for now 19 days almost. We came from Detroit, we was homeless there, we was looking for help. They told us to come here, we might seek help. We got here and there's no help. Okay, okay. All right, and so I mean, what was it that happened two months ago that made you become homeless? Well, I was in the house and we were um, in a property that another person had took over. And uh, I guess they want to redo the property, so they wouldn't really properly give us money to move. So they scared us up out of there. Due to that, they sprayed my filter with some, made me sick, made my son sick. They called Child Protective Service on me for no reason. And when they came and they witnessed what I've been going through and how I kept up the property, they let the case go because they was like, whoa, whoa, they just tried to do this to you and then try to ridicule you and then sit you out and then do that to you. And I'm a good parent. Everybody knows that him before hospital, how good I treat my son with all his disabilities he got. What disabilities is he? He's cognitive delay impairment. I was in a room in Henry Ford. I know I don't look my age. They left me in a room. I told him I had dilated. They left me in there. My son popped out of me and hit his head on the floor. And due to that, he's mild cognitive delay disorder. And I changed his diapers. I don't have nobody to come help me or do anything. I mean, where was where's his dad? His dad is in Detroit, Michigan. His dad is mad at me and Henry Ford for what happened and he never got justice. I have $14 million of a lawsuit Jeffrey Fiverr was supposed to help me with in Michigan. And the Eternal Revenue told me that I had got this money and I never did. I was awarded to the state when I was 14 and I have not been getting help since then. I had three lawsuits that they didn't took from me. Hmm. Okay, okay, all right. So, I mean, the, the, the long and short of it, it sounds like you was living in a place, it got bought by someone else, mm -hmm. and you had to go. Yes. Okay. They didn't okay. give us time, and the court was telling that they should at least gave us $2,000. They only gave us $1,600. That really wasn't enough for a special needs kid, and I'm buying water every day out of a place I spent over $12,000 in. Okay. Okay. Hold on. All right. So, quick interruption, but all right. So, I mean, so the long and short of it is that, um, so, okay, so... You was, you was homeless up in Detroit, um, and so how did you, you know, what, what what made you come down here to Atlanta? Well, I've been here uh, 15, about 16 years ago. Like I said, I'm 41, I don't look my age. I was in a relationship down here strong. Uh, you could say basically his baby mother was kind of psycho. She lied on me downtown Atlanta, got me locked up for something I ain't do. What was that? Uh, it's called uh, Terrorist and Threats. And uh, good thing I kept all my information in the phone that she had and everything she was sending me. And I had caught a charge for something I didn't do. I was staying really good in Atlanta. I never wanted to leave. What was the charge? It was called terrorist threat. Okay, so but the same I had charge. Okay. The magistrator down here that, that she started it first. So they was going to drop it because she was texting me for almost a month before I even said something back to her. And so I did show him that, and that's how I got released from that charge. So this was a, phone. and so this was the baby mom of a guy that you was in a relationship with. Yeah, that I truly were, loved. Were you I, married to this guy? You no, know, I was engaged to him for two years and a half. He had bought me a beautiful ring and a nice car, and we stayed together. 
And so how long were you, what did that relationship last? It lasted for three years until his baby mama found out about our relationship. And so why did it end? It ended because she tried to kill her kids to get back at him. Slowly was poisoning them, made them sick, sent them to the hospital and whatnot. And it kind of sent him into overdrive. He ended up kind of getting on drugs and whatnot. I got him off, but it didn't really What work. drugs was he on? Uh, alcohol and, you know, doing the other stuff. Uh, What's the other stuff? Tell up us. the nose, up the nose. Okay, the yeah. powder? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I prayed for him and I moved on with my life. I didn't get bitter. I didn't catch any charges for the did, last so 10 did, years. Did you have any kids with him? No, I did. Okay. And so have you ever been married? Uh, no, not really. Just engaged. Okay. Okay. What was the longest relationship that you had? I had a relationship for nine years and then four. Okay. And so how long was the relationship with his father? I've been knowing him since I was two years old. He's like second cousins to one of my cousins, but not my cousins. I get it. Yeah. He was supposed to take me on the show so we could do a DNA test. After seven years, uh, Judge Mathis told him when the, uh, the DNA come back that Jordan Arthur Williams is Delon Williams' son, that he will be paying me $10,000 on the spot. So he, he chickened out. But right now, he's making my life a living hell. My family won't help me. They know I have a special needs kids. They know I didn't do that to me. They know Henry Ford did it. They thought I got my money. They thought I lived off $14,000. I never had a brand new car. I never had a house. How could you think that? It's by God's grace. I love the Lord so much, I tattooed him on my arm so that people understand how much I love him. Well, let me ask him. this. Has there ever been any history of drug use? Yes, it has in the past. What, I was what, on what everything. Drugs? I was with a white guy who put me on heroin and he had me on uh, ice. Now that's that's worse than any kind of drug that you can ever remember. So you was on meth? I was on meth. How long ago was that? Uh, my son, he's 10, so that was about 15, 16 years ago or longer. That's how okay. long it's been. And I don't even smoke cigarettes, I don't drink. When's the last time you did any drugs? Uh, it's been a long time. I've been very clean. So I mean, yeah. why why doesn't your family want to help you? Yeah, because of the uh, the million dollar lawsuit. Like I said, uh, Jeffrey Fiber took my money up there, and that's not the only lawsuit I had got taken away from me. Right now, I have a lawsuit with what just happened to me in the complex. Uh, how them spraying me and making me sick or whatnot, you know. And so you say, did, did you win the lawsuit? Uh, two lawsuits I did win, but I never got my money. Eternal Reverend told me about the money, but I never got it. So what happened to it? They took it, the lawyers, because I was awarded to the state. I've been on my own since I've been 14. Like I said, I don't even have a rap sheet. You would think the state would come out and help me, seeing how they made Jordan disabled, how they made me disabled. They left a fetal bag in me, so I got to take this jelly and certain into my body. Cost costs $100. So, I mean, let me ask this. So, has, has his father ever been active in his life? He was at one point, and then if I don't want to give him my money, I guess, or our uh, our car when we had it at the time, he don't want to be involved with us. It makes no sense. But my family... When's the last time he saw his son? About two, two and a half months ago when he came over and I told him he was messing with me. Yeah. Who was messing with you? The complex people. Okay. And he said to me, well, just move. And I said, I will, but I want to go to a state where it's warmer because I'm disabled, you know, and I don't want to be somewhere where it's cold and it's hurting my body. And he said, well, you should go back to Atlanta. You should go back to Atlanta. So we was just thinking like, maybe we should just go back to Atlanta. Maybe we'll get help here. And we do got an income, you know, maybe we'll find something. That's for his disability? Yeah. How much is that per month? Only $1,600 a month. And now we're hearing everybody want $1,800 to move in something. So that's not enough when you're changing somebody's diaper. Have you tried to go through like the, the voucher program? The housing yeah, voucher program? We down here trying to find out. But now they're telling us it's too late for the program today. So now okay. we got to start all over again. Okay, okay. I mean, so has anything traumatic ever happened to you in your life? Yeah, it has. I was born in prison. My mother was a Black Panther. And that's how I got awarded to the state. And it seemed like since then, the state has not really been helping me. That's well, You say you enough. was awarded to the state at 14, though. Yeah, I was. So who'd you grow up with up My to? My auntie. Okay. Yep, she took me from the uh, jailhouse and she adopted me. Her name was Jordan Fowler. Rest in peace. Such a good lady. Uh, spiritually, she taught me a lot. She taught me how to survive. Uh, I, I, my son had died on me about several times. He then caught pneumonia because he hit the floor. I asked Medicaid to help us with the RSV shot because I didn't smoke or drink with him. I was able to breastfeed him. Right. Like I did with my daughter because I, I didn't do any drugs with none of them. 
so why did Medicaid not help us? So we went front up well, the hold, hill. Hold on though. So, but, but before that, why did why did you go to the state at 14? Why couldn't you stay with your aunt? They all died on me. They all older. My dad is like 105 right now. He was yeah. 77 when um. How old was died. your mom? Uh, she died of permanent cancer or something in the stomach, however. And she just died like maybe two or three years ago, my real mom, but she lost custody of me. So my right, auntie, I mean, the, the mom that that was in prison, yeah, she, how, how old, you say your father was 77? Yeah, he, he was much you? older than my mom. He's Haitian, my mom is Indian and white. And since I came out dark skinned and my family like don't really, really help me as much. Um, it's like I had to be like them, light with good hair. Um, so being with all of that, that's been real tough. That's really tough to deal with that man. Know that you are. How much white. older was he than your mom? Uh, about nine to ten years. Okay, so it's about a decade. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right, and so I mean, so you say you have a few siblings. Yeah, I got a few. Siblings. Where, where, where are they at right now? Well, my oldest brother Eric, I asked him to help me when the Woodbridge Estate had took my first lawsuit, and he didn't. Then he, he tried to act like I'm so mentally ill when I don't have no kind of outbursts. I've never been in no mental hospital. It's has there ever been a mental health diagnosis? Yes, it has. It's called part of depression because I am depressed. Who wouldn't be been on their own since they've been 14? Like I said, I meet people that I've so you seen. say you, you say that people try to uh, basically have sex with you? Sex with me all the time. Family members, you name it. If I don't want to, they not help me. What family members have tried to do that? Uh, some uncles that's deceased, some cousins that's still living. How, re how recent was that? Uh, well, two of them was just like a year and a half ago with one of my uncles before he died. And I told him what I was going through and he said he was going to help me, but he wanted me to come over there to have sex. And that was like really, really bad for me. Did you ever do that? Him. When I was younger, I had sex with a couple of family members because I felt that's the only thing I was going to have protection and help. Yeah. And was that was that uncles or cousins or uncles, cousins, stepbrothers, you name it. So you had sex with your stepbrother when you were younger? Yeah. How old were you then? I was about nine or ten. How old was he? He was about 15, 16. Did y'all have sex multiple times or? Yeah, I got rid of a guy who got killed when I was uh, six years old. He got murdered down in the street because he had a girl that came over my house. And I stayed on Gladstone and Third Street in Detroit. And we was young then. I was about nine or ten. And I remember they said, "Oh, we got him now. We got him now." And I could hear bells ringing in my ears. And God was telling me, "Oh, we got him. He's going to hell now for what he did to you because he did so many times. He did stuff, and it was just terrible. It was just terrible. Mm. I used to have nightmares. I would wake up just using the bathroom and throwing up on myself. I get counseling right now for some of the." I've been through even with my baby's father. He used to do that as well? Yes, he did. He came right out of jail and he did not care about you know, being disrespectful with me. That's basically how I had my son. <laughs> yeah. How does that make you feel when you think about it? it? It makes me feel really bad that the world would be so evil to good people. I'm here to offer gifts and prayer. I can change people's life. They don't know how I made it this far. I mean, have you burned any bridges with anybody? Like, is any of this your fault? None of this is my fault. That's why I stayed in Detroit so long, thinking that somebody was going to help us and give us our money back. Because none of this is my fault. I didn't uh, have intercourse with anybody besides my baby daddy when I was pregnant. I took good care of myself. I took the prenatal vitamins I got here and went to uh, Detroit and got right on with the other prenatal vitamins. Took all my medicine and I was able to breastfeed when they seen that all the test results because I wasn't on anything. And so if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have been able to save my son. And I want to say shout out to Nakia Williams, Alan Williams, now my doctor for Jordan in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, if it wasn't for her, my son probably wouldn't even made it this far. I had a really good doctor, and I appreciate what he was working in for us. I just really wish they would have given me my money for me and my son. They left a feeding bag in me. I almost died. I had eclampsia, and then I crashed, and I ended up on high blood pressure medicine for the rest of my life, and now my hair won't grow. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen, miss, um, I mean, so at this point, what are we trying to do to get out of this position? What are we trying to do? Um, right now, we're trying to get stable housing here. We're trying to come up with some money to get stable housing here if we can. 
We're trying to get us a car because our legs are killing us. My son, it took him four years to learn how to walk because when he fell out of me, he hit his head and his legs. He was diagnosed with bow leg, not leg syndrome. Like for four years of his life, I had to carry him on this side of my body, just cramped up, just paralyzed, if you can hear that. And it just made it even worse for my disabledness. Okay. Well, I mean, so if anybody wanted to reach out, help, or donate, um, do you have a way people could do that? Do you have a social media, cash app, anything like that? Yeah, I got a cash app. What's your cash app? Um, I don't know it by heart, but I do have it here, and I can oh, show oh. it. It's very important. And so... How's it going, fella? He's going. hanging in here. God got you. It's okay we talk about these things. It's all right. My daughter showed me how to do this, which I appreciate her. She's been a lifesaver. Does she know that you're homeless? Yes, and she sent us $500 out of her money, and she trying to move. This was two weeks ago. We just finally ran out the money. Like I said, shout out to her. If it and where does her. she live again? She stays in uh, Michigan right now in Detroit. You want to go there with her? <laughs> you want to go back to Detroit, man? How we going to do that with no money? You say no? Because she just got her place. Right? And so you say she's in Detroit though, right? Yeah, she's in Detroit. Okay. All right, miss. Well, listen, we really appreciate you taking the time, having the conversation with us. Um, you know, we, we definitely wish you nothing but the best out here um, for you and, and, of course, the sake of your son. All right? Mm -hmm. All right, miss. You have a good one, okay? All right. You All too. right. Bless.